Well, this is one of the most impressive and important houses in Woodville. It is called the Catchings House because it has been owned for many, many years by the family and descendants of Dr. Charles Catchings, who was a very popular physician here years ago. But actually, the house was built in 1820 by one of the early governors of Mississippi, Abram Scott. In those early years, Mississippi was established, as you know, in 1817, and it provided three governors, Abram Scott, Gerard Brandon, and George Poindexter, and the first lieutenant governor of Mississippi, Duncan Stewart. When I first met Mrs. Ketchings, Dr. Ketchings' wife, she told me, she said, I want you to get this history straight because for years and years and years, they claimed that when John James Audubon came up here to teach dancing, he taught it in this house. And she said, there is not a room in this house big enough for him to have done that. <laughs> well, it turned out she was quite right. John James Audubon came up here in 1824, which I think is fascinating that, mm -hmm. you know, he was in West Feliciana Parish and painted over a hundred of his birds there. And he was also teaching art and music and dancing to earn money to get his books published. And the way he came up here is a fascinating tale because President James Monroe in 1819 named a district judge to come here and serve. His name was Judge Peter Randolph. And he came here and served until he died. And he established a plantation just south of Woodville called Elmwood. And it was Judge Randolph who heard about this artist living down in West Feliciana Parish and teaching. And he said, I want him to come up here and teach my young son how to fence. That was a real popular thing at the time. And Audubon came. And when he got here, he obviously realized, I can do more. I can make more money up here than just <laughs> teaching fence, and I can start a dancing class, which he did. And later, early recent biographies have proved that he did come here. And they have a letter that he wrote to someone talking about the dancing classes that he had here over a period of two or three months. He had 60 students, and whenever he came up for a session, most of their parents came. So there's no room in this house for, for him to have done it. But he referred to what he called the hall where he took his students. We think that was the market hall, a building down on Main Street, which is long gone. We think that's where the, the uh, classes were held. The market hall was torn down years ago. It was some sort of commercial building. But on top of the town hall, there is a metal fish lightning rod that is believed to have come from the roof of the market hall. It's that nobody ever looks at it because it's so high up on the roof. But anyway, to show you how history leads from one thing to the other, the young son of Judge Randolph, whose name was John, he grew up on Elmwood Plantation, just south of Woodville. And he married the girl next door at the plantation home that is called Elmsley, right next to Elmwood. And that's still there. The house is still there. Her name was Emily Liddell. And John Randolph and his wife Emily eventually moved to Louisiana. They bought a great lot of land on the river they established what became one of the most prosperous, one of the largest sugarcane plantations in Louisiana. And where is that? And they called it Not Away. Not Away. Not Away. Not Away today is one of the most famous plantation resorts in the United States. What part of Louisiana is St. James Parish. Oh, wow. And it's 
to me, it's fascinating that that famous place in Louisiana was started, established, lived in, and built the house, which is still there, by two people who grew up in Wilkinson County. And just as another footnote to that, the plantation that the Randolphs had called Elmwood, the house is gone now and somebody else owns the land, and the little family cemetery was basically crumbling away in the woods. And a few years ago, nobody knew it at the time, a member of the Randolph Family Association from Virginia came to Woodville, bought a plot out in Evergreen Cemetery, got permission from the landowner at Elmwood, what was Elmwood, to remove the stones from the Randolph Cemetery. She had them repaired and stabilized and preserved, and she placed them in a special plot out at Evergreen. Wow. Which is wonderful because they were, had such a part of the history here and they were just all but forgotten. Mm -hmm. And we've seen so many cemeteries that no family member around, so they just crumble away and they're eventually they're just lost. This one, I don't approve of moving cemetery stones, but in this case, she saved them. Mm -hmm. And I can take you out and show you the plot. It's yeah, very interesting. That. I would love that.